Hi, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the state of language in the world today, how that affects us, and how an app that I'm working on is helping to make language uh, easier and more accessible. So first, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, a little bit about the state of language today. Uh, up here, you see hello translated into 24 of the top languages in the world. You might see hello, hola, bonjour, ciao. If you speak Chinese, you might see Ni Hao up there, maybe you recognize some of the others. I can read maybe a quarter of these. And that's about all I can say in most of these languages. That's crazy. Especially considering that if you total up all the languages that are spoken in the world today, you come to a number a little bit over 7,000. Now, okay, one more time. Okay, so here's the top seven languages in the world today. They make up about 35% of native uh, speakers in the world. You start out with Mandarin, about 14%, about 6% for Spanish, 5.5 for English, and it goes down from there. Now, if you look at bilingualism rates in the world, they estimate them about 50%. And that's actually mostly exclusive to the, the other section over here. As you get into the larger language groups, the rates of bilingualism go down up to, down to about 27.5% for major languages, and down to 10 to 15% for English-speaking countries. Now this is because there's about twice as many second language speakers in English as there are native speakers, but that means that if you speak English, lucky you, you can speak to about 15% of the world. That's it. 15% of the people in the world. I think that's absolutely insane. So, the solution, we're building it on top of the existing infrastructure and it comes in two parts. Part one is a cellular network. It's already there. It connects every single person in the world. We all have a cell phone in our pocket. I've got mine right here. Even made it up on stage with me. And um, yeah, but have you ever tried to communicate with someone around the world? There's still a huge issue. Last time I was on the phone with someone who didn't speak English, I remember I said, hello, and they said, hola, or something else maybe, and I couldn't understand what they said, so I said, hello, click. I heard the phone hang up. They didn't, they didn't want to talk to me, or they couldn't understand what I was saying. It's a huge problem. We were connected, but not really. We couldn't understand each other. There's still a language barrier, and that's what it is. It's a barrier. So then there's part two, machine translation. Machine translation is great. The first time you use Google Translate or Microsoft Translator, you're like, hey, I can type anything into this and it'll translate into any language I want. That's amazing. Until you try to use it to communicate with someone. How many of you have tried to do that? How was it? Yeah, there's a few of us. It's not very good. It's kind of hard to communicate with someone. You know, if you need to translate one thing real quick, it's okay, but not for communication. So here's what we're doing to, to help fix that. This is Hermes Translator. It looks just like a messenger. It looks just like a text messenger. You use them all the time, but this is the world's first messaging translator. So that means that you can communicate with anyone in the world in any language. I can type in English, you can read it in Hindi. I used it at my cousin's wedding. A couple weeks ago, she was marrying an Indian guy. Her family, his family all speaks Hindi. We were using it to communicate back and forth between English and Hindi. Or I used it to communicate with my housekeeper in Chinese the other day. It's, um, you know, it's, it's really magical. And what we're doing is we're doing the, able to use this to provide translation free of charge to everyone in the world. Now this is really great. Today the cost of translation is enormous and most people can't afford it. It's totally inaccessible for most people. And most people can't communicate with anyone outside of their native language. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'm looking for, uh, that's about it. You know, there isn't a person in the world today who can't benefit from being able to communicate in more languages. Yeah, so thank you.
I'm looking for uh, an Android developer. If anyone wants to help try and get this on the Google Play Store. Um, I'm looking for investors, if people want to um, talk about investment and how we could collaborate. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> any questions? So this is spoken and not written? No, this is written. Okay. Um, you can use the dictation feature that already comes with the keyboard, and obviously we're trying to expand it to more features like spoken and things like that. But as it is, most people will use text messaging to communicate when they're already. And so it's a very convenient method, and it's also very easy to apply machine translation to. Um, so so that's, that's what we're doing there. And then do you see the original language and the translation, or just the translation? You do. Um, it, it'll be, in the next update, it'll be an option. You'll be able to see it only in your native language, or you'll be able to see the original message also. Uh, right now, you automatically see the original message when other people are messaging you. Um, but yeah. yeah. Other questions in the back? Yeah, what differentiates your translator from Google So the question was, what differentiates this translator from Google Translate and other translators? So actually, so the translation itself, right now we are basically just pulling it from Google Translate, or actually Microsoft Translate. In the future, we'll be pooling both data from all machine translation databases as well as user feedback, because this allows people to use it in a much more efficient way. Currently, if you want to use Google Translate to try and hold a conversation with someone that's not in the same room with you, you have to copy and paste every single time that you want to translate something, which is actually like, it makes it really, diff really difficult to actually hold a conversation. Um, this way, it's totally instant. It's, it's, you, know, you don't even have to think about it. You want to communicate, you can already read it. They can read it. You don't have to worry about it. If there's confusion, it pops up right away. You can see the original message if you want. Um, and you can come to a conclusion about what you're talking about. Um, yeah, in the future, we'll be pulling all of them along with user feedback to actually create a database that uh, better translates chat conversation to. OK, last question right here. Yeah, well, so, so since you talked about pulling the translation into how are you algorithmically reading which ones are the correct ones or the ones you want to use? So, so that's so where the user feedback comes in. I see. Yeah. The, the, the question was if you're pulling the, um, the translations from other uh, databases, how do you weight that to get the, the correct, to make sure it's as correct as possible? But it's, yeah, based on user feedback, you're using a crowdsourcing model similar to like Waze or Wikipedia or reCAPTCHA, um, which is actually a very proven model and, and, and it has been applied. I mean, it is a little bit applied on Microsoft Translate, Google Translate, but they don't have it in such an accessible way or a really good way to like pull, you know, large different numbers of translations. 